everyone, it's Kapir Bhutto from OCE. In this lecture, first I'm going to go through all the basic formulas used for flag tool designing. Then I will take you through the designing process and some assumptions used to achieve our final design section. In the end, we will do one question relevant to flag tool design of beam. So let's start with the formulas. This equation is used to calculate the balanced percentage of steel. The percentage of steel which causes steel to yield at the same time as the concrete crushes is called balanced steel ratio or balanced percentage of steel. FC prime is the compressive strength of concrete and FY is the yield strength of steel. And beta 1 is a factor that depends on the value of FC prime. In addition to that, if the actual percentage of steel used in the section is less than the balanced percentage of steel, the section will be under reinforced section. Whereas if the actual percentage of steel is greater than the balanced percentage of steel, the section would be over in four section and it will fail in a brittle manner. The second equation is used to calculate the upper limit of steel percentage called as the maximum uh, steel percentage. And E is, here is the modulus velocity of steel. Furthermore, if the actual percentage of steel used in the section is less than the maximum percentage of steel, the section will be a tension control section having a net tensile strength greater than or equal to 0 0.005. And on the other hand, if the actual percentage of steel is greater than the maximum percentage of steel, the section will go in transition region or uh, even worse, compression control section. To evaluate minimum percentage of steel, two equations are available. One when FC prime is less than 4500 PSI, rho minimum in that case is equal to 200 over FY. And the second one when FC prime is greater than or equal to 4500 PSI, rho minimum in that case is equal to 3 root FC prime upon FY. Fourth equation is mu equals to RUBD square, which is also equal to phi mn. mu is the bending load effect or the factored movement which comes from the applied load. And ru is just a factor which is equal to mu upon bd square. And b is the width of the section and d the effective depth of the section. And nominal moment capacity is the resistance provided by the cross section by the materials that is steel and concrete to resist the bending load effect coming onto the beam. The fifth equation gives us the value of percentage of steel to be used in the section. And the last equation provides us with a relation between RU and Rho, that is the percentage of steel. Phi is the strength reduction factor, which is the safety provision provided by the ACI code. It is multiplied by the nominal moment capacity to reduce uh, the moment capacity by a certain amount uh, to account for the variation in dimension or the material properties at, at construction site. Number two, it reflects uh, the importance of the structure. Number three, it reflects the degree of ductility provided by the section. For instance, the greater the ductility provided by the section, the greater the value of phi for tension control section is equal to around 0.9. For compression control, it's equal to 0.65. And for transition region, it lies in between these two extreme values. In designing a beam section for flexure, we have three unknowns, that is the width of the section, effective depth of the section, and the percentage of steel to be used in the section. There can be three cases. The first one is when all of the quantities are unknown. In this case, we have to assume two unknowns practically and we have to determine the last one. The second one is when B and Rho are known and we have to determine the effective depth. And the third one is when the cross-sectional properties, that is the P and D, are given and we have to calculate the percentage of steel to be used in the section. In all the cases, previous equations will be used to calculate the unknown and how they are going to be used depends on the case we are dealing with. When you start off the flexural designing process and since the cross-sectional details that is B, D and Rho are unknown, how do you incorporate the weight of the beam? Roughly speaking, the weight of the beam will be equal to 10 to 15 percent of the unfactored load that it carries. For instance, consider a simply separate beam subject to a uniform dead load WD and a uniform live load WL. So the self weight of beam in this case would be equal to 10 to 15 percent of the total unfactored load that it carries, that is WD plus WL. What if I want to assume the overall depth of the section, that is H? The depth of the section can be taken as between 1 over 18 to 1 over 12 of the center to center span length of the beam. Or you can take H as the minimum thickness of the beam given in ACI code, ACI table 9.5A, 
uh, of the ACI code 318 14, which gives the minimum thickness of the beam to control deflection. Other going factor could be the architectural limitation, that is, the architecture restricted the dimension uh, of the depth of the section to a certain value. Now, what about the width of the section? Past practice was to assume width of the section equal to half of the overall depth of the section. For instance, if H is equal to 24 inch, B would be equal to 12 inches. Beam width is preferably taken as equal to wall thickness because if it is greater than wall thickness, it would project out of the wall and affect the structural appearance. Again, the architectural limitation can be another factor governing the width of the section. Another option is to take beam width equal to column thickness. Alright, now let's do one question relevant to the flexural design of beam. So the question here says that analyze the beam and design its rectangle cross section 8 inch by 24 inch for positive moment only. Uh, so we have B equals to 8 inch and H equals to 24 inch. And we have to design the beam for positive moment only. That is we have to draw the bending moment diagram for this beam and locate the position and magnitude of the maximum moment that is acting at a particular point in this beam. That is, we have to design for MU. And FC prime and FY, that is the material properties are known. And the concrete cover to the main reinforcement is of 2.5 inch. So if I draw the section of the beam, it will be something like this. And this is B, which is equal to 8 inch. And the overall depth of the section is equal to 24 inch. And this distance from top compressive fiber, if I'm assuming this is compressive fiber, uh, to the centroid of the main tension reinforcement is effective depth D. And, and the distance from here to the bottom surface of the section that is the concrete cover is equal to 2.5 inch. So if I want to calculate D, uh, I just have to deduct 2.5 inch from uh, 24 inch, which, which would give me 21.5. So D is equal to... So first we need to determine the bending load effect, positive bending load effect uh, because of this load or the factor at the moment. Okay, so this is the zero zero line here. Uh, now we will draw the bending moment diagram uh, for this beam 
and we have the bending moment values at different x values on horizontal axis we will have x values and on vertical axis we will have uh, moment ordinates so at x equals 0 m equals 0 so just plot the points at x at x1 equals to 2.5 that is here uh, m is equal to 6 minus 6.25 so this would be somewhere here and at x3 equals 5 m1 equals to minus 25 this would be here and similarly plot all the points And this is the bending moment diagram produced for this beam and for this loading configuration. And the interesting thing to note here is that there is no positive moment being produced uh, all along the length of the member. Uh, and we have to design for positive moment. So positive moment for this case, mu positive is equal to zero. Give fit. So now how do we design a beam which has uh, no loading or zero mu coming onto it? So since no moment is coming onto this beam, we need to design the section uh, for row minimum. That is the minimum percentage of steel. And let's proceed to our design. So MU positive was equal to zero. And we need to calculate the row minimum. Since FC prime is less than equal to 3000, Row minimum is going to be equal to 200 over Fy and Fy in our case is 60,000. Oh, sorry, this would be PSI. 60,000 PSI. And this gives us a steel percentage of around 3.33 raised to the power minus 3. Uh, that is 0.33% steel. And if I calculate A is from here, A is, that is the area of steel is equal to rho into BD. And rho here is equal to rho minimum, which is 3.33 raised to the power minus 3 into BD, 8 into 21.5. D is equal to 21.5. And if I calculate A is from here, it's equal to 0.573 inches square. And let's say if I'm using number four bar, the area of number four bar is equal to, and if I divide uh, A's by AB, and here is number of bars. Two point nine six. That is, we need approximately three bars, uh, number four bars, to be used in the section. And and so our final section would be something like this. That this would be eight inches, and this would be twenty four inches, and we need three number four bars as our tension reinforcement number four bar and and now let's check whether or not these bars can be adjusted in single layer for that we have this formula B minimum minimum width of the section which is equal to N D plus N minus 1 uh, into S plus 3.75 and N here is the number of the bar and D the diameter of the bar and S is the clear spacing between the bar. That is, if there are two bars, this would be the clear distance between them. And this is uh, equal to 1 inch or D, whichever is greater. And so in this case, S is going to be equal to 1. And if you apply the formula, N equals to 3, D is equal to 4 by 8 inches. And again is equal to 3 minus 1. S uh, in our case is equal to 1 plus 3.75 B minimum is equal to and B minimum is equal to 
0.25 inches which is less than 8 inches provided in the question and this means that these three number four bars can be arranged in one layer and we are done with this question in the next lecture I'm going to solve this question but for negative moment and the negative moment maximum negative moment was equal to minus 25 so I will be solving this question uh, this section for minus 25 kip fit thanks for watching till the end and take care